Hello, my name is Kim, and in this tutorial, I will be showing you how to do the single crochet cluster stitch. This is a variation of the cluster stitch. There are many different kinds out there, and this is just one of them. For this stitch, I used a 9mm and worsted weight yarn, and you'll need both of those, as well as some scissors, something to make tassels with, and if you prefer a row counter to make my breezy cluster scarf. I love how it turns out. It's just super squishy, and I had to make it in two colors because I love it so much. When you're ready, go ahead and make a slip knot and chain multiples of two. For the scarf, you will chain 220, but for this video, I'll chain 14. One, two. Once you have your chains, you will work wherever is most comfortable for you, but I choose to work in the bumps or the third loop of the chain. You'll find the second chain from the hook and place a single crochet. From there, you'll chain one, skip the next chain, and single crochet into the next. Then chain one, skip the next chain, and single crochet into the next. Chain one, skip a chain, and then single crochet into the next. We will do this all the way to the end of the row. And place a single crochet in the last chain of the foundation chain, and we'll chain one and turn. Now in this pattern, your chain one does not count as a stitch. So for row two, we will place a single crochet in the first stitch of our row, then we'll chain one. Now we'll notice these two chain spaces. We're going to work a single crochet two together into both of these spaces. So we'll insert our hook, pull up a loop, find the next chain space, insert your hook, and pull up a loop. You'll yarn over and pull through all three loops. Then we'll chain one. Using the same chain space as before, and the very next, so these two, we'll place another single crochet two together. So insert your hook and pull up, find the next space, insert your hook and pull up, then we'll pull through all three loops and chain one. And again, the same chain space and the next, we'll place another single crochet two together. So insert and pull up, insert and pull up, and then pull through all three loops and we'll chain one. And the same thing until the end of the row. So we'll place, pull up a loop in the same space as before and into the next chain space, pull through all three loops and chain one. And on your last, you should have two loops left and your stitch for the end of the row. So we'll place one more single crochet two together. Then we'll chain one and place a single crochet in this last stitch of the row. And now we're on to row three with a chain one and a turn. And row three is exactly the same as row one, except we're working into the single crochet two together spaces for the single crochet and we're just chaining one over the chain one spaces. So you'll single crochet into the first stitch of the row, then we'll chain one. Now how you can tell which stitches you're skipping and which ones you're working into is the chain one spaces from the row below are these little bumps right here, or the ticks, and the single crochet two together stitches from the row below that we'll be placing a single crochet into are the ones that look flatter or more long. So after you've placed your first single crochet and chain one, we'll skip this chain and place a single crochet into the into that stitch from the row below. Then you'll chain one, skip that stitch, and then single crochet into the next. So chain one, skip, and single crochet into the next. And we'll do this all the way to the end of the row. And then place a single crochet in that last stitch of the row. Chain one and turn. Now rows two and three make up your pattern repeat. So this is the front side when we're working on row two or the cluster side because we're single crocheting two together. That's the front side of your work and this will be the back side. 
Now for row four, when, which is a repeat of row two, you're still working into the chain spaces for the cluster. It just looks a little bit more scrunched because we don't have a foundation chain, we have stitches. Um, so just, you know, poke it. If you're using the nine millimeter, just poke through with your fingers to see if you can find them. That would be easy for you to put your hook into. So you'll single crochet into that first stitch, then chain one, and then start placing your clusters into the chain spaces from the row below. And I'll work this stitch up so you can see what it looks like, but for the pattern, you will work up until you have a total of 38 rows. And I'll show you how to count those rows in a moment after I've got all this worked up. As you're working up the stitch, you'll notice that it does want to veer to the right and make sort of a parallelogram shape, and that's okay. In the cluster scarf, I actually took advantage of that fact and attached tassels to each of the four ends just to make it drape really nicely, and you can't even tell that it's misshapen when you're wearing it. And I just really liked it, so I left it alone. If you don't want that in your scarf or if you're making something else, you can easily block it and make it square and get rid of that diagonal shape. And it looks really nice. Um, but I, like I said, I like to leave it in sort of a wonky shape just because it, it drapes really well together. So how to count your rows is this is the front side because our cluster that makes it this little V, that's from right to left. And that actually signifies a even number row. So if you'll identify your rows that have that V in them, I guess it's not really a V, it's more of a point. <laughs> and you'll just count. So that's two, four, six, eight, and 10. Now row 38, because this is a two row repeat, so if you're following the repeat, you'd actually end on 39, but the scarf just ends on the row two repeat of the cluster, and then you'll fasten off and weave in your ends. So just count until you have 38 rows of this, this cluster, and then you'll fasten off, weave in all your ends, and make four little tassels. I'll link Sorella's tassel tutorial in the link below because that's how I made my tassels every time except the only difference is in her video she uses a book and I just used my phone to make the tassels and I wrapped it around 50 times I think. Thank you so much for watching. Please be sure to check out the written description and instructions that are on my blog linked in the description below and check me out on Instagram. I'm trying to hang out there more often so I hope to see you there.